Hi, you probably came here with an interest in how computers work and maybe you are thinking about building one yourself. If you are completely new to the topic, you may want to check out the YouTube channel by Ben Eater. Ben does a great job explaining step by step how to build a so-called simple as possible 4-bit computer on breadboards. Many other enthusiasts have documented their unique CPU design on the net as well. Some only use transistors or relays, others build systems around classic CPUs like the Z80 or the 6502 processors. I'll put some links in the description. But if there are so many divergent design possibilities, which one to choose? Me being a lazy person, I wanted something with maximum bang for the bucks. A minimalistic but efficient system that would encourage further explorations like how to write an assembler, how to access peripherals, how does a bootstrap process work, how to write an operating system, or can I play Pong and Space Invaders on it? I wanted something a bit like the famous Altair 8800 or the Apple One, but without their many thousands of transistors and integrated CPUs. Let's see how far we can get under a minimalistic design approach. So with an 8-bit data bus and a 16-bit address space, we would be able to address up to 64 kilobytes of RAM. I think 32 kilobytes should be okay as well. Um, our computer should be able to run at least at 1 MHz clock speed and it should be breadboard compatible so we can build it as a prototype, right? Let us aim for the smallest possible number of standard ICs. I think I will stick to my trusted 74HCXX series. For our minimalistic design, let's uh, use a maximum of 16 control signals for our CPU and allow for 6-bit instructions and a 4-bit instruction step counter so we can have 16 micro steps per opcode. And of course, three flags, the negative, the carry and the zero flag. The arithmetic and logic unit of our CPU should only be a simple adder, having two registers, let's call them A and B. But the CPU should be able to carry out conditional branch operations and it should have stack and subroutine capabilities. Input and output should be handled via a standard terminal. It is not immediately obvious that there is any chance to fulfill this spec at all. Especially the restriction to only 16 control signals is harsh, but it keeps the complexity down. All our CPU's microcode would fit into two EEPROMs, each having 8 data bits and a 13-bit input. That's exactly where we end up adding all the bits of the instruction register. The ALU having only two registers seems way underpowered. And for us, the stack and subroutine capabilities and terminal I.O., we are missing a couple of registers too, right? Well, in the next few videos, I'm introducing an implementation of this spec. If this gets you interested, let's take a quick look now. As you can see, there's a relatively small number of 74 series ICs and an Arduino Nano here, which connects the CPU to my laptop's terminal emulation. The Arduino provides the system's clock and it allows to remotely control the CPU and to upload programs into memory. There's also a tape reader and a VGA output module I'll show in a minute. Let's turn it on now. First thing, after power up, we can take a look at the memory content. Let's take a look at the first memory page, the first 256 bytes. It's showing just a random data. Let's clear this memory and take a look again. Okay, so that looks nice and clean now. Now we upload and run a small test program, printing out the character set to our terminal screen. All right. The program runs at about 100 Hz or 100 clock cycles per second now. 
Let's run it a bit faster. So that's about one kilohertz. And that's close to six or seven kilohertz. Let's run it at full speed now at a clock frequency of one megahertz. Oh, well, it looks a bit faster now. Let's play a game of Pong now. Let's run it. And there you go. It's Pong, playing on a homebrew computer. And the CPU can do a signed multiplication too. Okay, this is still running at uh, 5 kilohertz. We can uh, also run it in full speed now. So that's a bit faster now. Uh, we can stop uh, the program and take a look at the results. Okay, that's, okay, that's minus 56 times 1. That's really minus 56. Let's start it again. Now the numbers are getting bigger. Let's pause it again. And yeah, as you can see, minus 100 times 5 is really minus 500. So this simple design is powerful enough to be usable in a way similar to the early micros I mentioned. Of course, there's no operating system and no basic programming language implemented yet, but it's a starting point. Now I've disconnected my machine from my laptop in order to use it in a standalone fashion. I now connect the VGA monitor I have here and also a, a, a scrap PS2 keyboard, which I've uh, butchered a bit. So I will use a USB B connector um, as a simple 5 volt power source connected to my little CPU here. Okay, and um, let's connect the VGA monitor now. Okay, I hope you'll be able to see the uh, characters on the screen now. Let's connect the PS2 keyboard and then we should be ready to go. Ah, that's not that easy on these breadboards. All right, this should be it. Yeah, as you can see, we can really do the same thing as uh, as before with a laptop. We can display the memory content, clear the memory, and uh, well, of course, we can't upload any programs anymore because uh, there's no easy way to do it. The uh, computer is completely empty now. There's nothing in the memory, no intelligence to load any kind of software, so we have to do it ourselves. So this is a small paper tape reader I built from uh, uh, Lego spare parts. And I will connect it now to the uh, to the board and show you in a minute how we can upload uh, paper tape with this device. And of course, we'll need uh, lots of paper tapes, something like like this or shorter shorter ones like that. And uh, yeah, let's do that. I'll go over the boot process really quickly here, just to give you an overview. The, uh, the manual boot process consists of three steps. First step is to toggle in a very small lightweight bootloader into the memory manually with the keyboard. You would do that with uh, toggle switches on the early micros. After that, the CPU has uh, enough intelligence to read in what's called an, an absolute bootloader. Uh, so this is a small program that enables the computer to uh, read a paper tape to a, a given memory address. And uh, last and third step is to feed in an actual program, like uh, the one I have here. This will print out all the characters on the screen as well. Read it into the paper tape, into the memory and run it. So let me uh, set the start address of our bootloader to 7FF and uh, toggle in this really small bootloader program. It shouldn't take too long, it's only 10 bytes. So it's 0, 1, 
deposit one five, deposit ten, deposit seven F, deposit thirty two, deposit zero two, deposit seven F, deposit thirteen, deposit zero, deposit seven F, deposit. Let's uh, take a look if we can find this bootloader in memory now. So it should be at 7FF. And yeah, you can see it over there. It's in the first line. So let's start this uh, initial bootloader in order to load the uh, more comfortable absolute loader. So let me grab my paper tape image here and feed it to the paper tape reader. And this should be it. Let's take a look at the memory, if we can find the absolute loader now. Okay, now that we have the absolute loader in the memory, we can use it to load uh, as many paper tapes as we like. So let's start it and run uh, and load this, this uh, program that prints out uh, all the characters onto the screen. So you can see a little prompt there, um, waiting for a paper tape. So let's feed it in. And that seems to be successful. So let's now set the uh, start address of our pro program and run it. <laughs> and okay, yeah, it's working. It's printing out all the characters. I hope I got you interested in this very minimalistic CPU design. In the next videos, I'm planning to do a step-by-step -step explanation of all the interesting design aspects. Please let me know if you have any special requests by leaving a comment. Take care. Bye.